This episode is about riding transitions and how to improve your transitions, especially if you and your horse have a habit of not so great transitions that you need to overcome. Transitions happen in just a split second of time, so they can be really tricky to improve. I hope this podcast episode helps. So here we go. Episode 90, Transitions. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony, because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. So this episode, we'll talk about a riding technique. Now, this can be hard to picture. I know so many of you are visual learners, but I promise I'll do my best in this podcast. And in the Dressage Naturally video classroom, just know that there are lots of videos related to this and some videos that will show you exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll kind of narrate my way through it where you can see it with a real horse. All you have to do is go to the video classroom and then click on the video label transitions. So that's dressagenaturally.net slash classroom. So transitions are one of my favorite things to coach students through. Now it does take a lot of focus, but when it does change and it does improve, it is such a big deal. (laughs) Transitions are such a powerful training tool. You find out so much information about the dynamic of balance and communication between the horse and the rider in transitions. Now I like to look at transitions a lot online also. And the same things that I'm talking about here, riding, you can practice online, especially if you've been playing online with your horse in the way that I teach. So I use the same kind of thought process. I use the same kind of body language, whether I'm in the saddle or on the ground. So I guess we should start by thinking about, you know, ideally, how do we ride a transition? So let's say everything's perfect (laughs) and you're going to do a transition. So if you're riding along and everything's perfect, you're totally in balance and in sync with your horse, your body is matching the rhythm of the gait that you're in, you start to think about the new gait and you just embody the rhythm of the new gait And there you go, (laughs) right? How do you do a canter? You just canter. How do you do a trot? You just start feeling the trot. Now, mentally, there's a little bit of an intention um, warning. (laughs) You let the horse know what's going to be happening, right? So there's a little feeling in my body of, and my mind of going, ready? It's going to be canter now. So you don't want to just be trot, 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 surprise, that was supposed to be canter, right? So it's, I'm thinking, I'm trotting along, I'm thinking, hey, I'd like to do a canter. There's a feeling of ready, it's going to be canter left lead now. And those, those elements are really important. You're either following completely in the gate you're in, you're thinking about what you're going to be doing, but you're still riding the gate you're in. You let the horse know what it's going to be, and then now is now. Now, a lot of times when we talk about transitions, people will talk about the timing of the footfalls and when do you ask compared to what the horse's legs are doing. Now, yes, that absolutely matters. There is a perfect time for the horse to begin the strike off let's say from canter, uh, from trot to canter or walk to canter. This is when this comes up a lot. So yes, there is a certain magic moment where the horse can most easily transition. However, I find honestly, I really don't think about that when I'm riding. And what I found in teaching it is that if I try to teach it that way, 
the students just get all in their heads. They're thinking about footfalls. They're thinking about timing. They're thinking, 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 and they're not feeling anymore. So if a student's really on the wrong timing, I might do some exercises where we practice naming, you know, when is that hind leg in the air? When's the left hind leg in the air? When this, when's the left hind leg on the ground? You know, and we'll play with exercises like that. But I kind of like to do that as a little side note. And then when you come back to do transitions, you've really got to feel it because every horse is so different. And yes, the horse needs to organize his feet so he's striking off in the right time. But every horse has a slight difference in timing between when do they need the signal from the rider so that they have time to organize their legs to strike off in the right moment. And if you just ask at the moment, often it's too late they needed to know a little bit ahead of time. How much ahead of time? Depends on the horse <laughs> and the state they're in there. So, you know, as you listen to this, some of you might be thinking, but when's the right time in the footfalls? It matters, but I'm not going to really talk about it because I found the more you feel and the more you prepare and the more the horse is ready and waiting and the way I'm going to describe, it kind of just starts happening at the right moment. So I want you to think about feeling it and creating a horse who's also preparing himself for the transition. And this is where we get in this really magical, beautiful, elusive uh, moment between preparation and assumption, right? Because some of you are riding horses that you like think about canter and they're off. <laughs> you know, you're trying to stay at the walk and you start thinking trot and they're already trotting. So we need a horse who's ready and waiting. And both of those parts are equally important. We don't want them too good at waiting and we don't want them getting too ready. So it's this, this, this is the place that I really focus on when playing with transitions, do they feel ready and are they waiting for the now, right? Right. It keep going till further notice ready. It's going to be left lead. Not yet. Wait for it. It's going to be left lead. Do you feel ready now? And the now is now. So let me give you three questions to ask yourself when you're writing transitions or thinking about transitions. The first question is, do you like the gate that you're in? Most of the time, your transition is only going to be as good as the quality of the gate that you're already in. So take the time to make sure that you like the gate that you're in. Now, asterisk footnote, <laughs> sometimes you can do a transition in order to improve the gate you're in. So for example, if I have a horse that's really um, plopping along at the trot, I might just go, hey, canter. <laughs> and, the, and I'll do some canter for the purpose of then going back to the trot. Now the trot's a little more loosened up or a little more awake or something like that. That's more of like using a transition as a training tool to improve the gait that you're in. What I'm talking about here is how to ride a quality transition. So in that moment where I'm trotting along, my horse is falling asleep, I might just go, hey, canter, just to like wake things up. I'm, I'm going to relax some criteria. Like it doesn't have to be round. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't care where your head is. Just go. <laughs> All right. So that's a different category of doing transitions. But let's say you're past that point And now you're thinking, all right, I want that transition for a 10 you know, practicing high quality. All right. So first question is, do you like the gate you're in? If you don't, then gets, you know, that's what you need to focus on. Let's, let's see if we can improve the gate and get it to a point where at least you feel like the harmony is high. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Some of you are at the lower levels. Just for that horse on that moment, do you like the gate? Is that one of their better moments? high levels of harmony, high levels of the horse uh, meeting their responsibilities. You're not feeling like you have to hold it together or push it together. All right. So let's say you get to that point. You're like, yeah, 
this is a nice trot. <laughs> the next question is, are you in neutral? So like I said, if you like the gate, but you're like, okay, I got it going. I really like it. And as long as I don't let go of anything, I can keep it together. And you're using all of your aids just to keep that trot, <laughs> trotting the way you want it to, then you're not ready for transition. So we need to be able to go, I love this gate. I love this trot and I'm in neutral. And remember it's an active neutral. Ne active neutral is not nothing. It just means you've reached an agreement with your horse. You're in self-carriage. You're not having to push. You're not having to hold. You're just maintaining. So my definition of active neutral is when you um, confirm, embody, and allow the horse to do the thing that you've asked them to do, right? So you're, you're riding, you're showing them, I really like to continue in this trot exactly like this, but you're not feeling like you're holding it together. You can take your leg off for a moment. You can put a little loop in the reins for a moment. Nothing falls apart. All right. So do you like the gate you're in? Are you neutral? The next question is, do you feel ready? So often what happens um, with students, and you know, these are questions I ask myself too, is they'll get a lovely trot. And I'm like, all right, do you like the gate you're in? Yes. Are you neutral? Yes. Do you feel ready to canter? And all of a sudden they're like, oh, actually no. And they start doing something at the trot. They start changing things. So like, yeah, this feels like a trot I could maintain forever, but I actually don't feel like I'm ready to canter. And they might ask for a different energy level, or they might have the horse a little more engaged, or they might feel that there's a little crookedness and they clearly won't be able to get to the left lead because the haunches are falling out and they, they make an adjustment. So you want to ask yourself, do you love, I'll use the example, uh, trot to canter. Do you love the trot? Are you neutral? And do you feel ready to canter? Simply asking yourself that question, notice you, you'll know, you'll either feel like, yeah, I think I'm ready. Or you're going to go, oh no, hang on a second. <laughs> I didn't know we were getting to the canter. Let me make a couple adjustments. And then you repeat the questions. All right. Now, do you still like the trot? Are you back in neutral? And do you feel ready now? Because what will happen is when you go to get ready, you might go, oh, I need to energize the trot. And now, now the trot's maybe a little bit rushed. So you're like, oh man, now I got the energy, but I don't really like the trot. So you got to fix that up. And then again, don't start holding everything together. Check. Now, do you like the gate you're in for this trot that feels ready to canter? And are you still in neutral? It's a different active neutral. It's the active neutral for I love this trot and I feel ready for the next gate. And if you can, re those are the three questions I ask students. Do you love the gate you're in? Are you neutral? Do you feel ready? And if they say yes, 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 I go, okay, ask. <laughs> And then we find out, right? So either they ask and boom, there they are in the canter, you know, easy peasy. And then I go, great, you just got great information. That was a good trot. You were in neutral um, and you were ready. And now why is that neutral so important? That neutral piece is so important because it's kind of like a still point. So I like to think about in my mind, there's, um, there's the, there's neutral continue till further notice. There's preparation for something. That's the, do I feel ready? And then after I feel ready, I have to get to that again, that neutral again. So I'm ready and waiting. And that's a still point. And the still point is important, that active neutral moment. So that then when I add aids, for the transition, or I just change my seat and change my rhythm for the transition, they can hear it. All right. So sometimes when we're preparing, we add so many aids. It's, it's kind of like, think of every aid as a, a, a person in a room talking. And the more people there are talking, then if one person whispers something, you're not going to necessarily hear it. But if people are talking and then there's a still point, everybody goes quiet and someone goes, canter you're going to hear it. So that's the feeling you want with your horse. And that's why that active neutral is so important. Now the student, when I'm coaching them through this exercise, I might say, do you like the gate you're in? Yes. Are you neutral? Yes. Do you feel ready? Yes. And I'll say, okay, go ahead, canter. And then they ask and nothing happens. 
or they get the wrong lead, or the horse runs a little bit at the trot first. And then I go, oh, great information. You thought that's what ready felt like, but it wasn't actually the feeling of ready. So we go back and we prepare again. What went wrong? What do you think was missing? Was it something you need to ride differently? Were you unclear in your position or was your horse really not as ready as you thought? So those three questions I'd love for you to review. And, um, and there, if you go in the video classroom, click on transitions, you will find, um, actually, you can actually click on the video label called three questions and you'll find, um, a video that has this, it shows me riding and narrating a horse through exactly this, three questions for transitions. Now, I, I thought this would be a great time to talk about up transitions versus down transitions, because there's, um, they're different <laughs> and you've got to be thinking differently. So I talk about um, six essential gymnastic abilities. So there is uh, a video in the classroom about this. Uh, I think it's March 2017. We'd, I discussed this. It's also the subject of my Upward Spiral of Gymnastic Success course, um, where we go deep into the six essential gymnastic abilities. But two of the <laughs> gymnastic abilities are being able to release into an up transition and to be able to ride forward into a down transition. And the, this is... Um, true whether it's up and down a gate or within a gate, right? So when we're doing anything up a gate, like from walk to trot or trot to canter um, or walk to canter or from collected to extension, those are all up transitions. We want the feeling that there's more in there waiting to happen. And we just we just tell the horse when, and when we tell them when, it feels more like a release, okay, go, <laughs> now's the time, than a push. So if you are pushing in your up transitions, you're not going to be as successful as if you prepare and really think about that. Do I feel ready? Do I feel a canter in the trot waiting to happen? Do I feel a trot in that walk? getting ready to happen, ready and waiting. And there's a little bit of a feeling for me of like a bubbling up of energy. And then my core, there's some sort of muscles in my core, not my butt cheeks, but in my abs and in my deep core, that's preventing it from happening yet. So right, it's going to be left lead. Not right now. Wait for it. It's that moment. And then when I say now, it's almost like I release that little piece that's been holding them. And it feels more like an exhale into the transition. So my seat relaxes down into the saddle as the saddle and hopefully the horse's back pushes up into me more than it feels like a push. If I'm pushing, it's going to more often feel like I'm popping my seat out of the saddle in some way. I mean, even just a millimeter or I'm driving and I'm crunching my horse's back down. Well, it's really important that up transitions feel like we have the potential energy built in there and then we release it when it says now. Now, different from that is how we ride down transitions. So the other gymnastic ability is to be able to ride forward into a down transition. This means going from canter to trot, trot to walk, canter to walk, or from extension back to more collection. And the idea is we don't want our horse to just hit the brakes. And I mean, I'm talking in, we're past foundation now. This is for quality, quality balanced biomechanical transitions. So we don't want our horse to just plop. And I think we've all probably felt that canter to trot transition where it feels like they fall off the curb, right? They're cantering at one speed and then they plop down on their forehand and end up going faster at the trot or they just hit the brakes, right? Um, so don't confuse riding forward to a down transition to going faster. But what I mean is you as the rider have to be able to activate and call upon your horse's hind legs even as you're going down a gate. Doesn't mean faster, but for engagement. 
So this is tricky because it seems backwards. And I find most riders have to really practice consciously activating into a down transition. But what's nice and kind of implied in that is that you have a horse that's um, waiting for you and staying balanced. If they're doing that canter and then plunge into this huge big trot, it means they're losing their balance and they're falling forward. And you've got to address that. We want them to tippy toe down into that down transition with cute little active hind legs instead of falling into it. So in order to ride forward to a down transition, they actually kind of have to wait a little bit with their bodies so they're not losing balance. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we'll talk, this will come up a little bit more as we continue to talk about, you know, how to ride those transitions. Now, one of the trickiest parts of riding transitions is that they are a split second in time. Hopefully they are a split second in time. You're trotting, you've got this beautiful trot, you, hopefully you've experienced this, and hopefully if you haven't experienced it, you've seen it, so you know what you're picturing. But it's like the horse, the horse is trotting, and then like in a split second with, you know, they're cantering, and nothing else changed. It just, they just changed the rhythm of their legs. So a transition is a split second of time. That's what makes it amazing and what makes it really tricky if there is a postural problem, especially if it's an old habit, it can be really hard to change because it sort of looks like, okay, I'm preparing, I'm preparing, I'm preparing. And no matter how much you prepare, you ask for the canter, let's say from the trot. And if we watched it in slow motion, they would hear the signal start to sprawl, the neck goes either too far up or too far down, the back drops, the stride length changes. This happens for a few strides, and then they can't. <laughs> and it's like, oh, missed it again, right? And it just seems like no matter how you prepare, you know, they throw their head up when they go for a walk to trot or something like that. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that scenario. Because if everything's going well, you just practice transitions, you'll get them, follow the three questions I gave you. But there's, there's situations where, you know, even I, me riding horses who've had a long habit of, you know, flipping their head up every time and taking that hoppy step <laughs> every time they go from walk to trot, or maybe they get a little sprawly every time they go from trot to canter, or they fall off the curb and plunge into their um, canter to trot transition, or when they go from trot to walk, they kind of hit the brakes first and then go forward. There's a lot of ways to get it wrong. But let's say they've been doing that for a long time, and now you want it to get better, and it can be really tricky because it's like, darn, missed it again. <laughs> So how do we break that pattern? Here's some guidelines. Raise, number one, raise your standard for the gate that you're in. So go deep into the how good is the trot? How good does the trot need to be to get ready to canter or to go back to the walk? Like really good. So make sure that yeah, and raise your standard can just be um, make sure it's even better. Make sure you can be even more neutral. Make sure it can last longer. Make sure that if you have a moment that loses balance, you set land speed records for getting it back, right? So you might be able to spend three circles to get a really nice half a circle. Well, then cut that time down. Make sure that if your horse you know, drops his back or rushes, that it doesn't take three circles, but it, it maybe takes three strides and maybe then even one stride. So raise your standard for the gate that you're in. Raise your standard for the transitions that do work, right? So maybe you're working on your canter to trot transitions and oh, fell off the curb again. Well, go work on your trot walk transitions and see if you can feel any hint of the same sort of problem that you have at the canter to trot. Can you feel the same sort of problem in the trot to walk. And if it's easier for you to deal with at the trot to walk, practice it there. Because it's not about the gait as much as the 
the dynamic and flow of the energy through the body between you and your horse. Um, yeah. And the aids so you're, and your timing. So you can start to change those patterns and the dynamic of what's happening in an easier circumstance. Now, the other thing you want to do is practice recovering as quickly as possible, not only at the gate that you're in, you know, that you want to transition out of, but when you get to the new gate, right? So if you're doing um, trot to walks, you're going to think, okay, do I love the walk? Am I in neutral? Do I feel ready? Yeah. And then you go up to the trot and let's say, oh, hopped into the trot again. Well, how many strides does it take to get to the trot that feels as best as possible? Set a land speed record, get really good at whatever you have to do and take stock. Does it take two strides or two circles? And practice saying like there, okay, now I'm back. I've recovered from the weird transition. And then when it feels good and you feel neutral, go back to the walk again and set a land speed record. Tell yourself, even if it falls apart in the transition, all right, we'll stride number two, get it back together and take stock. Did it take two strides or two circles? <laughs> Try to get it closer to it takes as little time as possible and reward yourselves along the way. Reward that recovery. So it's like the, the transition recovery system. So after you've practiced that, that will already help build up your coordination. And I want you to feel the difference between the system that's riding the horse's body. What's the balance? What's the connection? What's the seat connection? What's the energy level? There's that system. There's the system that um, aligns your horse or activates your horse or um, improves the connection. That's, there's that system going. And then there's another system. And that's the one that's in your seat where you're embodying which gate you're at. And you've got to practice having that system that's riding the body, feeling the balance, feeling the alignment, feeling the line of direction, feeling the general energy level, feeling the basic speed. That's all, or the length of stride, that's all going in the background. And you've got to add on to that, whether you're in a trot rhythm or a walk rhythm or a canter rhythm, two separate systems. So this, this raising your standard for the gate you're in and practicing recovering as quickly as possible once you get to the new gate. Oops, okay, that's in the past. <laughs> Good, bad, or ugly. We're on stride number two now. The transition's over. Don't worry about it. Just set a land speed record for that, whatever it is you're doing. Because you, you, you need to ultimately be able to be taking care of that system no matter where you are in the middle of a gate, in the middle of a transition up, in the middle of transition down, that system's always working. So that's the next piece. And this is where we can really deconstruct. We get ready, we get to neutral. And then when I say, or when you ask yourself the question, do I feel ready? This is when you really want to keep your antenna out. Because often, and I'll use the trot to canter analogy, if you're getting ready at the trot and I want you to get really on the edge of that canter, right? It's going to be left lead. Not yet. It's going to be left lead. Oftentimes, and this is, this is a gift. This is a golden moment. You're getting ready for the left lead. You're giving them a little hint that it's coming. There's a chance that you could actually find the problem of the transition showing up while you're still in the trot. That is a golden moment right? You get so close to the edge of the transition that you feel them starting to drop their back or starting to rush or starting to do whatever, catch it and, and say, got it. Now you have the benefit of having multiple strides to address it because you're not in, you didn't do the transition yet. So there's a feeling of get ready. It's going to be left lead, not like that. And that's the moment where you can actually take that split second of the transition and stretch it out and give yourself more strides to be able to play with it. So when I prepare, I want to get so on the edge of that transition that they're almost trying to do it for the sake of, 
yeah, try to do it your way and now, but I'm not doing it yet. So I have the luxury of I'm still at the trot and I have multiple strides that I can address that. So that's what I mean by kind of over prepare, get right on the edge, get ready. It's going to be left lead. Not like that. And here's the, the key is to stay in that state of ready and waiting. So it's not like trot, get ready to canter. Oops, not like that. Never mind. And I'm just going to go trot forever. You stay in that moment. You stay in that moment where they, but it, they're feeling like, but it, I can tell it's about to be left lead, isn't it? And I go, yeah, it is about to be left lead. Stay right there. And let me, let me, um, improve how you're moving in that moment where you're almost trying to get to the left lead, but still wait for me. That's the magic moment that you have that luxury of stretching out. Now, <laughs> a challenge that you might have at this stage is, so let's say you have, your horse has a habit of every time you go to trot to canter, you start to ask for the canter transition or they start to feel it coming and they like fling themselves forward, drop their back, they get larger in the trot and then you know, after a few strides, they probably canter, but now it's a sprawly canter. The first drop of progress you're going to have is catch, is recreating that sprawly moment of the transition while they're still trotting. So now you stay in that steady ready, state of readiness and you're able to coordinate that in that moment you can keep them gathered up and, and they're not falling apart. The next thing that might happen is that then you go ahead and ask for the transition and they're like, nope, I thought you said you didn't want me to do it. So I'm not going to do it. So now you have a really nice looking trot. And every time you ask for the canner, they're like, nope, nothing. <laughs> this is actually progress. It's progress for a moment. You're not there yet. But the progress is that you were able to get right up to the edge of the canner not lose any quality of the trot, even though they're that close to the canter. Now, remember, they, they have a habit. They've probably, if they've been doing this a long time, they think canter transition means, hang on a second, let me sprawl first, get a little momentum, and that's the trot I can canter from. So when you keep them really engaged and don't let them do all those little evasions, they might think that they can't canter from there. They might be like, well, that's, that's hard. My butt's not strong enough for that. So be really gentle in this moment because it is progress. And this often happens that we, we tell them, nope, not like that. And after a few repetitions of nope, not like that, sometimes they're like, okay, nope. <laughs> so just be gentle. Take that as a win. You're making a drop of progress. And often if you just give some breaks, try it again, and you get better and better at being in that moment where you're preventing the sprawl and you're able to stay light in your aids and get to that still point again at that moment, often then the transition just comes back. Maybe you have to be a little more supportive, a little more of a cheerleader, go, come on, no, really, you can do it um, without giving up um, any of the quality. And they'll do it and then just big, 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 big praise and stop for the moment and tomorrow's another day. If you find that, uh-oh, now my horse is really waiting and they're not doing it at all, then you might want to um, s step aside. This is like, I, it, it's not part of this exercise. Just go, okay, I think I lost my sensitivity to my canter to part. Stop the exercise and then just tune up the canter to part, the go means go, and then return to it later. But you, if you're needing to do that, you might need to like drop some criteria and just go, okay, if I need to really like give you a little tap on the butt, or if I need to like get up in two point or like canter across a field or, you know, be in some ways a little more like loud and obvious, just drop the criteria, keep a loose rein. just go, listen, I, I, I don't care how, just go means go. Let me make sure I've got, you know, canter means canter. Let them have a little room and then take a breath. Go back to where you were playing with the transition 
and see if it's in there so that when you have all that focus and you go back to that really quality where you're thinking about all that nice dynamic so that it maybe is a little bit more there. So when you go ready, it's going to be canner. Now they're, they're, they go ahead and do it. And again, be, if you've had to do that, go praise them for that, right? They're learning this. They're trying to do what you want. It's a coordination thing for both of you. So again, if this is a long term, like it's been chronic and you get a drop of progress like that, like thank them. They have to be so bold and they have to really think. You can practice this concept in trot to walk transitions, walk to trot. You know, th this idea, I've been talking a lot about trot to canter, but the idea um, applies to all transitions. Trickier is, is the down transitions, right? So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, for down transitions, it is the same thing, but it's a little harder going, if we use the canter trot, you know, transitions, going from canter to trot can be harder because they can fall out of the canter. It's a lot easier for horses to break gait um, while you're trying to prepare for that lovely down transition. So if you're, tr if you have a horse that kind of falls off the curb and plunges into their canter trot transitions, practice the dynamic in the trot to walk transitions. What is happening in your canter to trot? How does it feel? Do they get longer? Do they drop energy? Cause sometimes they like drop energy. They stop carrying behind and it shows up as speed but it's actually not speed from energy. It's speed from a ball rolling down a hill. So pay attention to what happens in your canter to trots and go get great at addressing that in your trot to walk. Once you have that system who's taking care of the horse's body, then you can try it at the canter to trot because that system is in place. That one system that's taking care of the whole horse's body while the other system can change which rhythm gate you're at. And here's another hint for the down transitions. When we, you know, we talk about the recovery system, right? So when you're at the new gate, good, bad, or ugly, practice recovering. So let's say you're cantering along, you're doing your best. Oops, they plopped out of the canter. You didn't catch it. S try to set a land speed record for recovering and making that trot you're in as good as possible, as quick as possible or whatever the gate you're in, canter to walk, whatever it is that the gate you landed in and think about riding forward to it. Now, how do we do that? It's hard to do if your horse is feeling like they're accelerating. It's easier to do if your horse kind of hits the brakes and gets stuck, but see if you can find a way to do something where you're asking your horse to be more active behind at the same time you're doing the transition. And for me, one of the simplest ways to do this is to ask for a shoulder in. So do trot to walk shoulder in or canter to trot shoulder in. So right at the moment you are changing gears with the rhythm that you're presenting to your horse, you're at the same time saying, hey, inside hind leg, <laughs> I need you under there. <laughs> Right? So trot to walk shoulder in, canter to trot shoulder in. And actually, if you have a horse who really wants to plunge downhill, um, do it next to a wall and do canter to trot counter shoulder in. So you're on the left lead, you're on a circle. At the moment, you're coming back towards the wall. Ask for your trot there, like a couple horses lengths before you actually get to the wall and then plan on going down the long side in a counter shoulder in. It's a big coordination effort for you, but it'll really help the horse stand up. You can practice giving a little touch on that outside hind, say, come on, come on, step up, and have that counter shoulder and make your horses smaller and taller. And you can do that same thing from trot to walk shoulder in. So a lot of stuff here. I hope this makes sense and you might have to listen to a few parts <laughs> again. And again, if you need to visualize it, check out the video classroom. There's a bunch of videos in there. But again, let's go back and remind ourselves how we really want those transitions to feel. Your horse is in a beautiful gait. You love the gait you're in. 
you're at a still point because you're in active neutral. You start to think about what the transition is going to be. And in that moment, your horse now knows what the transition is going to be. And you can feel that new transition in the, or that new gate in there ready to happen. Not so much that they're anticipating and jumping into it, although that might happen in the process, but you just, you, because you've practiced this way, you've practiced thinking, do I feel ready? Let's give it a try. You're going to start to recognize what your horse feels like when they're ready. And then all you need to do is just embody the new rhythm, the new gait. And your horse will work out the timing and the coordination of their legs so that they can step into the new gait easily. And then you don't have to be so technical about when you're going to apply that aid, <laughs> right? Because if you just think about when you're going to apply the aid, a lot of times we're going to mess it up because we're thinking and we're not feeling. So practice. Do you love the gate you're in? Are you in neutral? Have a still point. Send the message of the new gate. Do you feel ready for the canter left lead? Wait for it. And now. All right. Let me know how this helps. <laughs>